And when someone asks you a question, make sure you nod your head a million different times and just pensively look at the screen so you seem smart. <laughs> I am Adri Corti and welcome back to my YouTube channel. First things first, please make sure to subscribe and hit that red button so you always get notifications every time that I post. So today I'm gonna try my very first get ready with me video, but I won't be doing makeup because I don't know how. I'll be getting ready for journal club. So journal club in my lab is where we have to choose a paper and then present on that paper to the lab, explain what the paper is about, take questions, discuss the paper and things like that. I think most labs do it. And so I have to give journal club tomorrow. So I'm starting to prepare today. Should I do a video on procrastination? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk you through exactly what we're going to do to prepare for journal club. So the first thing obviously I have to do is choose a paper and I already chose one. In my lab you can choose it basically about something that's related to your research or just something interesting. So this paper I chose is loosely related to my research. Second, I'm going to do my first read through of the paper. So this is when I read it all the way through basically without stopping. I highlight important findings in yellow. I'll highlight figures in blue so the references to the figures I'll highlight that in blue and then I'll highlight stuff I don't understand like words I don't know or assays that I don't know in red so after this first read through I'll go through the paper again and I'll go through all the stuff that I highlighted in red and then go and Google it and basically just figure out what I don't understand so I can start to put all of the pieces together. So for those of you that are not familiar with the kind of the structure of a scientific paper, every paper basically has a similar structure. So the paper will start out with an abstract, which is like 250 words of a summary of the paper. So this is where the authors can give you a really short summary of what the findings were in the paper. Then you have an introduction, and this is where the authors will kind of set the stage, like the historical stage. So they should kind of set up, this is what has been found, this was a new question, and this is how we answered the question, and this is what we found. So the introduction should tell you all of that. And then you go into the results section. And so the results section obviously is what it sounds like. They're telling you what they found, and they're also making references to the figures that they made. And so they can say, we found that this thing is greater than this thing. And then for a visual representation, you would go and look at the data that hopefully supports um, the conclusion that they just made. As a result, there should be materials and methods, and this is where the authors will tell you experiments they did and how they did them. There will be a discussion section where the authors will then place their kind of new findings in the larger context of the field, talk about kind of maybe weaknesses in their paper, what still needs to be known, future directions, and things like that. So that's kind of the whole structure of the paper. And then after the discussion portion or conclusions portion, there will be references. And so these are the references to all the papers that um, they referenced in their paper. If you want to start to understand where the paper fits within the historical context of the field, then you should definitely go to the references. So after I read the paper and then go back through the parts that I don't understand, I am going to basically screenshot the figures and then put them into a Google Slides presentation. After that, I'll go through and start to annotate the figures for the presentation. If there's jargon or if there's abbreviations, I'll explain those next to the figure. What I'm trying to do there is just make it extremely clear for the audience about what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna try to declutter and make the figures look even better than they already hopefully do. And so after that, I'll add a conclusion slides after those figures about what the authors found and things like that, future directions. One of the last things I'll do for the presentation is actually add the introduction. Because usually after I have gone through the paper and kind of made the presentation, it makes sense to me more now what background slides I need to include and maybe what previous papers I need to include, again, to set the historical stage for my audience. And the last thing I'll do is present to my lab tomorrow. Um, okay, so the first thing I have to do, like I said, is read the paper throughout and make my highlights. Okay, 
So we finished the first read through of the paper and this is kind of what the highlights look like. So I've gone through once to actually go through again now and I'll show you my setup. So here is a copy of the paper and I'm gonna go through and look at the results again and go through on my iPad. And for example, like for figure one, I'll go to the results related to figure one and then just go through some of the text and add some annotations such as these to the figures. So I'm gonna start doing that now. Hello everybody. So I'm in the conference room where I'll be presenting for Journal Club today. I am not done making the presentation yet, so I had to spend the next hour kind of making sure I know really what's up with the paper and making the presentation to look really good. And so I'm gonna hopefully record myself actually giving the presentation. So, okay, I'll see you then. So it's several days later after my presentation, I successfully gave my presentation at Journal Club on the paper that you guys saw me read and make a presentation of. So now I'm going to go through my presentation and show you some of the things I do that I think is really effective for giving a talk and keeping your audience engaged and not confusing your audience. Okay, so let's get into it. So here you can see that I'm giving my first introduction slide and I like to give a little bit of introduction like as little as they need to start to understand the paper and then I'll show you later on as I give kind of more background information but it's best to do it kind of stepwise so your audience doesn't have to digest too much at once. So you also see that the introduction slide has that one word I'm introducing an idea and then I usually just google and find like a nice image that I can add and you should put references for your images. I, obviously you guys saw I kind of had to rush getting this presentation ready so I don't have the perfect like references um, but it is appropriate to show who made the figure but yeah keep it simple and don't try to introduce every topic in the paper at once, kind of stepwise introduce it um, just so the audience can understand and they don't get overwhelmed. Here I'm just showing like a really brief sentence about why the authors even did this paper, like what's important about it. So you want to get your, in your audience interested in what you're talking about. If it's about a disease state, you can say this many people have this disease, so the authors had this need to research this thing. You have to convince your audience that it matters and that it's interesting. Tell them the author's intent and set the stage for what the authors wanted to do. So you're basically providing context and trying to get your, your audience interested in what you're talking about. And then that text there, I try to, first of all, keep your text really minimum. Use bullet points so that people can kind of go through, don't put just blocks of text because it's too much. And again, just keep it really minimum. And so here I'm just putting a few pieces of information about the figure, like what tissues they're using and what assay they're doing. So the audience should be really clear about like what this experiment was done on, how it was done, things like that, from just kind of some of the supplementary text that you add to um, the figure. And you'll see here, so this is figure one and I'm only showing panel A and then here you can see I go into panel B and C. Don't put all the figures on one slide. That is so annoying to me when someone has like a figure with panels A, B, C, D, E, F and they put every panel at once on the slide. No matter how smart you are, when you're like watching presentations, it is overwhelming to see like five different pieces of data all at once. You don't know where to look. You're then not paying attention to what the speaker is saying because you're like looking all over the slide, like trying to take everything in. So I say feed your audience data really slowly. Like I'd say the maximum amount of graphs you should be showing is probably like three at a time so that your audience is listening to you speak and then looking at the data it's not that much, they're not overwhelmed. So I would break up even the panels within a figure and show them kind of in a stepwise fashion. So here I put jargon that probably most audiences won't understand and also abbreviations and what the abbreviations stand for. 
a lot of like papers in science can get crazy with abbreviations. And often when I go to a talk, they might talk about the abbreviation once and then 10 slides in there, they're showing that abbreviation again and I've forgotten what it is. So I personally like to just keep telling people what the abbreviations are. Like my audience shouldn't really need to remember. I can just remind them every time they see it. So this is another way that I'll show a figure when like the panels really fit well together like you kind of need to see panel A to understand panel C. I'll use animations so here you can see I'm showing panel D and E and then I'll use animations um, to make the other panels appear so that the audience can still see those panels alongside the other panels. So um, I'm still presenting it in a stepwise fashion, but if you really need to see all the figures together, you can just utilize animation so that people can take it in slowly, but still see everything together. So here you can see showing this figure and then below it I have basically this giant text that's like these results mean this and this and this. I do that for two reasons. One reason is because if the data to me is really confusing, then I will just take the author's words of what the results mean and plaster it up on the slide so I can just read it off as like a jumping off point if, you know, the data is kind of confusing and I need to be like, wait, what does this data mean? So that's the first reason. The second reason is so your audience can see what the data means. You're like, these results mean this and this. Then your audience can either then ask themselves, oh, did the data make me think that was what the result meant or am I not understanding? Pause, like these results mean this and this. Take a pause and let your audience kind of process and then see if they have questions. So a lot of what I see when people give presentations is that they just completely run through. There's really no discussion. No one takes a break, like just a natural silence. I know silence can be scary, but just, just take a natural silence so people can think and process. Because when you start a discussion about a paper, it's just way more enjoyable and you learn more than when you're just going through and no one's talking and you wait till the end. So like a midpoint discussion, people are still freshly thinking about the last thing you showed and they can ask questions then. And it just kind of wakes people up because I'm telling you, science presentations can get very boring very fast. So you want to keep your audience engaged, be more comfortable with silences, let them think about questions. I also don't like when at the end of presentations, people are like, does anyone have questions? And then they give you seconds to think of something and they're like, okay, great, moving on. Some people need more time to process a good question. So give them time. I'd rather not finish the presentation than, and have more discussion than finish early and you know, no one said anything. Here you can see I'm like within still giving the presentation, but now I'm giving some background slides within the presentation. So you don't have to show all of your background information at the beginning. You can kind of piece it in with figures that it's appropriate. Like I'm about to get into a figure about immunology, like I was here. So I need to show a little bit of background about immunology. I think it's easier to kind of do it throughout the presentation when it's relevant versus at the beginning when people are still trying to see what the paper's about. Now you're telling them all this background information. It's just a lot to take in. So I think just provide the background information as it's needed. Make sure to dance for your audience so they can stay entertained. <laughs> Here I'm showing the last figure. Um, and so the authors here made it easy for me because their last figure is a visual model of their findings from the paper. So it's really easy to actually go to this model and explain it with a visual. And so, you know, text conclusions, they found this and this is this, is way less effective than if you have a visual representation of what they found. So it's really nice when the authors make a model for you so you can just show it. If not, maybe you can make a model. A bio render is this website that I use that I love that has like um, these different basically stickers like you can make scientific figures really easily that looks super good. If you have the time, I would make a visual representation of the conclusions because then the audience can see with their eyes what 
the conclusions are and it's just way easier than conclusions bullet pointed. I will say if I don't have time and the authors did not make a figure for me, <laughs> I'll just do the bullet points, but I think the best option is visual. And when someone asks you a question, make sure you nod your head a million different times and just pensively look at the screen so you seem smart. <laughs> Those are a few of my pieces of advice for how to give an effective presentation. And this is, you know, when you're presenting someone else's work. I'll probably make another video when I'm getting ready to give a talk on my own work because there are some other things that I like to incorporate that I didn't talk about today. So make sure to stay tuned and hit subscribe, hit that like button, comment if this was helpful, if it wasn't helpful, if you wanna see more Get Ready With Me videos. Um, okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. It's not about you, it's about oh. me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. This is where I got confused a little bit, but this is how like a nine. Well, thank you, Adriana. I'm sure this will make you a YouTube sensation. <laughs> you think? <laughs>